In a few minutes, mister, this town will be owned by a band of renegades. And you'll be dead. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. I thought you'd never get down, hey, boy. Oh, it was a big job, Mr. Paladin. Let's hurry. The stage is ready to leave. The driver promised to wait for me. Uh, Why do you want so many things in one suitcase? Uh, Make my job easier if you take uh, two suitcases. It's easier for me when I only have one bag to carry on a long trip. Uh, Give me the bag. I'll take it from here. There's no need for you to get wet. Goodbye, hey, boy. Goodbye, Mr. Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Uh Huh? Oh, 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 I'm... Oh, I'm terrible. I'm sorry. Here, let me help you up. Please, forgive me, please. Are you hurt? Oh, my dress. Oh, my dress. It's oh, soaking. this is oh, terrible. You've ruined my dress. Please, I'll buy you another dress. I'm uh, catching the stage, and they're ready to pull out. I, I must go, but I'll be back in about ten days. Uh, I'll take care of it then. I'll buy you another dress. Oh, here, here, here's my card. Uh, I'm registered at the hotel. Have gun, will travel. Wire Paladin, San Francisco. Dandruff bothers most men, most women too, so listen. Today you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all eating shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. I had looked forward to this trip to North Fork. Not because of the job there, which turned out to be routine, uneventful. But because it would give me the opportunity to visit some old friends of mine in Three Winds on my way home. Sheriff Barry Deaver and his wife. The 20-mile ride from North Fork through sand dunes, buttes, and low hills led me to an unusually quiet Three Winds. The one saloon in town was quiet, too. What'll it be, mister? Uh, whiskey. If you're going to be in town for a while, you better check that gun in with the sheriff. Uh, against the law to wear a gun in Three Winds? It sure is. Sheriff Deaver's the only one who can carry a firearm in this town. Hmm. Sheriff Deaver has changed his laws since I was here last. Something new? Six months new. Mm. Well, I'm on my way over to Deaver's office. I'll turn it in then if need be. He's a friend of mine. Yeah? You from Philadelphia? No, no. California. Uh, I didn't think you looked like an Easterner. I thought the only friends Owen Deaver had left lived in Philadelphia. Owen? No, I'm a friend of Owen's father. Oh, well, uh, didn't you hear? Old Barry's dead. You Dead? Barry Deaver? Yeah. Last fall. Died of consumption. Owen came back from law school in Philadelphia and took over his shop. Uh Uh-oh. There's going to be trouble for sure. Why, it's just a couple of raunchy cowboys. Yeah, but Deaver will arrest him. He doesn't allow no shooting in town. (laughs) Yeah, look at here, French. One customer in this saloon on a Saturday afternoon. (laughs) Hey, what time do the girls come in, whiskey man? No girls allowed in this saloon. No girls? City law. (laughs) Didn't know we was in a city. Only seen one saloon. Takes two to make a city, don't it? Don't matter, French. We'll go up to North Fork. Plenty of girls up there. Now, we gotta have a drink first. Bring us two bottles. One for me and one for Mason here. You can't sell it by the bottle. Only four drinks to a customer. It's the law. 
What kind of law are you talking about? My law. The law of three winds. Well, I didn't know this town was big enough to have a sheriff. The law says four drinks to a person is the quota for a day. Same law says all guns must be turned into my office when you arrive in three winds. Now, what hey, is that? I'll give them act? back to you when you leave. Don't you think you ought to let law-abiding people keep their guns to defend themselves with? I defend law-abiding people in this town. They don't have to carry guns. As long as we get them back, I'll go along with your ordinance, Sheriff. Lay it on the table. All right, you men, I'm waiting. Mason? Do what he says. Yeah. There ain't no use arguing with a load of turkeys shot. They'll be at my office when you leave town. Watch it, Sheriff. My hand just shot my head. Whose side are you on, anyway? You can lock him up, Sheriff. He just tried to throw a knife in your back. You ruined my hand. Thanks for saving my life. But I'll have to take you in, too. For what? For concealing that derringer. You should have turned it in with the other gun. Hand it over. Look. If I hadn't kept the Derringer, you would have been killed. The law still stands. You'll spend a week in jail. What about me? What about my hand? You'll live, but you'll be in lockup till the judge comes through here. Then you'll be tried for attempted murder. You taking me to jail, too? No. You'll get out of town. If I ever see you back here again, I'll put you in jail for a year for trespassing. This town's out of limits to you because you've been associated with a murderer. Well, now, ain't you tall? That shotgun sure makes you something I never heard of before. Get out of here. I'm going. But I'll see you again, mister. What kind of rules are you laying down in this town, Deaver? Rules that respectful citizens expect from their sheriff. Well, don't you know if you disarm everyone who comes to three winds, you're waving a red flag in front of every gunfighter who thinks he's bigger than the law? As long as I'm sheriff, there's no one bigger than the law in three winds. Let's go. When friends drop in, let your hospitality show you're sociable in the modern manner. Pepsi, you know, is the favorite of the smart and young at heart. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Have you tried a Pepsi lately? All right, get in there. Deaver, you better get some bandages for this man's hand. I need a doctor, that's what I need. Or does the law allow a prisoner to have a doctor? We'll get you fixed up. Ma! Gotta come the new prisoner, one of them needs a doctor. You're a fool, a two-headed fool, shooting that knife out of my hand. You got your brains in your feet. I'll never forget what you did, mister. We could have both been free if you hadn't butted in. You talk too much, Enfield. How do you know my name? It didn't take much to figure you're one of the Enfield brothers and that the kid named French is a member of your gang. Well, we must be getting famous when tin horns like you know who we are. Well, I'll tell you something. It's gonna be mighty miserable for you when my brothers come back to get me out of here. You wish you'd never heard of the Enfield gang. Oh, and I don't know why you have to arrest every stranger who walks into this town. If I ain't nursing, I'm cooking. And if I... Paladin! <laughs> Hello, Ma. Paladin, bless the stars in heaven. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too, Well, Ma. how long's it been? A year, year and a oh, half? Oh, no, almost two now. Oh, and you never met Paladin, did you? No. You was away in school, then, son. 
He helped your paw round up the orneriest, wildest bunch of gunfighters you ever seen. It was the Barton brothers, wasn't it, Paladin? That's right. Well, what brings you back to Three Wit? Paladin, what are you doing behind those bars? Oh, and how come Paladin's in jail? Well, Ma, Did I... you arrest him, Owen Deaver? Yes, I did. Well, you just get him out of there right this minute, you hear? I can't do that. He violated the law. Violated the law? Now, just who do you think you are arresting a man like this? Now, turn him loose. Turn Paladin loose, or so help me, I'll take a paddle and beat you to a blister. That's all right, Ma. Well, it ain't all right, neither. Now that Owen knows that I'm a friend of the family, he and I can talk this out. We can talk as much as you like, Paladin, but you're going to stay in jail for a week. It's the law. For a week? For what? For concealing a firearm and not turning it in. <sighs> there you go again, with another one of your stupid ordinances. Now, what's going to come of all your foolishness, Owen? The law is the... The law is the law. Listen to him, Paladin. We let him go to Philadelphia to study, and what does he bring back? Five books, that's all. Those five books over there on his desk. The Municipal Code of Philadelphia. And he's been beating the town over the head with him ever since he come back. The ranch hands won't come into town anymore because he won't even let them spit in the street. Why, it's come to the place where nobody's even got any respect for the name of Deaver. Ma, uh, I... I don't hold any offense against him. If this is the law of three wins, I want to abide by it. We'll, we'll talk it out later. Now, you give me those bandages, and I'll take care of this man's hand for you. Yeah, all right. I guess there ain't no use arguing with you. Or with Owen either, for that matter. He's a man of principle and strong will. I'd say he takes after his maw. Ah, go on with your foolishness. <laughs> I'm going to start your supper. There goes a fine woman, Owen. You ought to be proud of her. I am. She doesn't realize the ways of the old frontier towns are gone. Are they? You gonna stand there and talk all day? My hand ain't getting any better. Orn, have you heard of the Enfield gang? Enfields? Hmm. Yeah, I got a circular on them just the other day. It's uh, in my desk somewhere. Well, this man is Mason Enfield. His partner in the saloon was another member of the gang, the one they call French. Are you sure? He's lying, Sheriff. Never even heard of the Enfield gang. I'll see if I can find the circular. Here's the bandage. Hold out your hand now. Let's see what we can do. Uh, stuff. Thanks, rabbit head. It's a good thing my left hand's in good shape. Uh, uh, why, all you... right, come on, hold it. Uh, uh, what's the matter, Paladin? Why did you hit him? Because he tried to hit me. Guess he didn't want me to tell you who he was. Ah, uh, you were right. His picture's here on the circular with the others. And here's the one that was in the saloon with him, French. Well, French will bring the others back here to get Mason out. Three more of them, Owen. And they'll shoot this town up and drag the jail down the middle of the street. You're going to need help. Let me out of here. No. Owen, I helped your father once. You and I could nail the Enfield gang. I won't let you out, Paladin. I'll round up a few deputies. We'll be ready for the Enfields when they get here. I hope you are, Owen, because there's a lot that could go wrong. There goes a treasure car. There goes another. And another. And one of them may be your car. Yes, folks, you may have a Fram treasure hunt filter in your car worth $1,000 and not even know it. A Fram filter worth 1,000 silver dollars. A filter change is important to today's cars, so important that Fram Corporation, in conjunction with its silver anniversary, is paying $60,000 in cash to get you to check your filters now. Last year... 10,000 secretly numbered Fram filters were distributed all over the United States and installed in cars during regular servicing. These filters are worth from $1 to $1,000. You may have one in your car and not even know it. A Fram filter worth 1,000 silver dollars. Check your oil filter and air filter now. If there's a specially numbered Fram filter in your car, you will win up to 1,000 silver dollars and your dealer will win the same amount. Get in on Fram's big silver treasure hunt. Check your car filters now. Owen Deaver, stubborn when it came to upholding his new laws, was inherently a kind-hearted man. He was considerate enough to move me to another cell, which allowed me a decent night's sleep away from Mason Enfield. Next morning, Ma Deaver let me out to have breakfast with her in the kitchen. Owen was out trying to round up some deputies. Paladin, what am I going to do about Owen and his crazy books? Yeah. He's... He's still young. 
He'll learn in time. If he doesn't get killed first. You think they'll come? The Enfields? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They'll come. No one knows how to fight. Mr. Deaver taught him. How to shoot a gun, use his fists, everything. He can hold his own when it comes to fighting. But he never learned the good judgment his father had. He's a rare youngster who learns wisdom from his parents. It usually comes self-taught through experience. Did you have any luck, Owen? No, no, Vala. What are you doing out of your cell, Paladin? I let him out. He's under arrest. Don't you ever let him out again. What'll you do? Rest me? Oh, uh, get back inside, Paladin. All right, Owen. Instead of putting him back in jail, why don't you deputize him? He's a friend. He's also a prisoner. Get in there. Owen, when your father ran this office, he wasn't afraid to take advice. Not even from a woman. I'm not, Pa. I don't try to be. You couldn't be. He was respected and well-liked. Well, why shouldn't he be well-liked? He never stepped on anyone's toes. He didn't have to. And he didn't need these five books to tell him what was right or wrong. He's right, Owen. Now, don't you start in on me, Paladin. What's the matter with everyone? Why can't they understand what I'm trying to do here? What made you choose the Philadelphia ordinances for three wins? Because they're good ones. I like living in a city guided by laws like these. But this isn't Philadelphia. There's no mayor here, no town council. All you have is a sheriff and a judge who comes through once a month. It's the sheriff who must decide what's right and what's best for his town. Yeah, yeah, and if the sheriff gets up on the wrong side of the bed one morning, everything's a crime that day. But if he wakes up feeling good, nothing's illegal. That's why we've got to have a legal written code to live by. I'm not arguing against that principle, but don't you think that you should write your own code? One that fits your town? Owen, they're out there. Who's out there? The Enfields, out front. I saw them through the curtains. Two men are behind a wagon across the street. And the other one's at the side of the house. They're waiting for you to come out the front door. I'll go out the back door and around the side. You won't have a chance against three killers. Let me go with you. No. Ma, get my gun and go with him. Go ahead. You know how to pull a trigger. You want to get her killed? Well, I'm not going to stand by and let them come in here and shoot us after you get killed. There's nothing you can do. I can draw their fire, give you a better chance. But they'll kill you, don't you understand? Who's going with you, Owen, your mother or me? All right. All right, Paladin, you win. Get my gun, Ma. Sure. Owen, there's a flat roof over the jail. Is there any way we can get up on top without making too much noise? Yeah, yeah, through the kitchen. There's a ladder just outside the back door. Here's yeah. your gun. Thanks, Ma. Let's go. Get out! There's another one out there. Yeah. Yeah, either that or the man on the side of the building came around back. What'll we do? Go up to the front window and open fire on the two up on the wagon. I'll try to get this man back here. How? I'll stay down on the floor and open the door to draw his fire. Now go on, hurry. All right. Did you kill him? Yeah. Yeah, he made a good target standing up at the rain barrel. If you'd have crouched behind it. You think these two by the wagon are the only ones left? Uh-huh. Now, you take anything on the right. Uh -huh. I'll take the left. As soon as one of them raises up to shoot... You got him. You know how to use a rifle. I had a good teacher. Oh, there goes the other. He's down. Come on. Both of them are dead. You're pretty good with a six-gun. I had some experience with the same teacher you did. My pa was a man you could learn a lot from. Yeah. I remember something else I learned from him the last time I was here. It was something he said. What was that? That one man doesn't have the right to say what's good for all men. The lawman doesn't try to dictate the will of the people. He reflects it. Paladin... You know anyone might be interested in buying some books? Oh, uh, I wouldn't sell those books, Owen. Just put them away for a while. 
Who knows, someday, three winds might have a mayor, town council, or even sidewalks. Yeah, maybe so. Come on, we gotta dig some graves. Mr. Paladin. Hey, boy. Oh, I knew you'd come in on the stage tonight. I make bet on it. <laughs> well, don't ever make bets on when I'll be returning to the Carlton. Let's get my luggage up to the room, will you please? Oh, yes, sir. I know when you come back this time. It's in the air. Hmm. What's in the air? Rain. It rains when you leave, and when it rains again, I know you come back. Oh, this time. Uh, incidentally, uh, uh, what about the young lady... The one I accidentally knocked down when I left? Oh, you make a very big splash. Oh? He saw. She's the one I make bet with on your returning. Oh, then she's still here. Uh, did she order a new dress? No, not yet. She waited for you. She says she'll ask you to go shopping with her. Oh. I remember, she was the most attractive young lady. Who is oh, most attractive? Why don't you make arrangements for this evening, hey boy? To go shopping? Of course. But be sure we start in the lounge at 7 with cocktails. Yes, sir, Mr. Paladin. Here comes Elmer Blurt, world's lowest pressure salesman. Nobody home, hope, hope, hope. Rudolph the bodybuilder at your service. I only came to tell you about the new 1959 Rambler. Okay, lie down on the table and let's talk. Well, I don't know. Lie down! Oh, oh, but the 59 Rambler... I know. First in sales gains, first in economy, first with personalized comfort. Couldn't you just count on your fingers? Imagine Rambler seats are individually adjustable. Perfect fit, perfect comfort for tall people or short. No more kinks in those leg muscles there. Oh, woe is me. No stiff neck either. Oh, ouch. Because Rambler has adjustable headrests. Yes, sir, only Rambler has the best of both. Big car room, small car economy. Well, you've sold me. Sign me up. Okay, but you'll have to carry me out to my Rambler so I can get my order pad. Rambler outsells all six of the best-selling foreign makes combined. 59 Rambler sales are nearly two and a half times greater than a year ago. See the success car at Rambler dealers. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Sam Rolfe and adapted for radio by Frank Michael. Featured in the cast were Paul Dubov, Helen Cleep, Ken Lynch, Jess Kirkpatrick, and Sam Edwards. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel.